What's up everybody, I'm Rossi and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to show you my top 10 list of upcoming games I'm the most anticipated of. Now of course we have to start with Diablo 4 and I'm pretty sure this game doesn't need an introduction. Even though Diablo Immortal pretty much ruined the reputation of the Diablo franchise, Activision Blizzard is facing some serious lawsuits and is an all-around bad company and Bobby needs a hard kick in the nuts, I cannot say that I wouldn't be waiting for this game. I'm not as excited about it as I have been before, but a Diablo game in an open world sure sounds like something to keep your eye on. Diablo 4 will feature loot-based action RPG with 5 different classes to choose from and a non-linear open world. Let's just hope it's not going to be pay to win. It's planned to release in 2023 for PC, PlayStation 4 and 5 and Xbox One and Series X. Now this is a game that I'm actually the most hyped about. It's a CRPG game based on the Rogue Trader tabletop RPG made by Flight Games from 2009 and it's made by Ovalcat Games that is known for their excellent CRPG titles Pathfinder The Kingmaker and Pathfinder The Wrath of the Righteous, both which are similarly based on an existing tabletop RPG and are just excellent games. Now it's not a secret that Games Workshop, which owns Wahame, gives its license to pretty much any developer that asks and because of that, Wahame games have been plagued with low tier garbage for a long time now, with rare gems here and there. However, because of Overcat's previous titles in this genre, I'm very confident about their ability to create exciting and interesting stories and fluid working gameplay. Not much else is known about this game other than it's a turn-based CRPG in Warhammer 40k world and you get to play as a rogue trader, a privateer with the blessing of the Emperor himself to explore and expand to the uncharted space of Coronus Expanse where you'll get to do quests, find interesting locations and recruit different companions from space marines to Aldari Rangers. This game is coming to PC only and there is currently no release date announced, however you can purchase founders packs on their website which give you access to beta or even alpha tests. Nightingale is one of those games that I just found out about during this summer's game festivals. There hasn't been that much real gameplay shown about this game, but it seems very interesting and might surprise everybody the same way Valheim did. It's a first person PvE open world survival crafting game, which you can play solo or cooperatively with friends. The arcane portal network has collapsed, stranding you beyond our world and you are trying to find your way back to the magical city of Nightingale. To do that, you need to become a realm walker and travel through these trench dimensional portals in a labyrinth of beautiful and dangerous fair realms. The gameplay reminds of Rust in a gas lamp fantasy world, but the real twist of this game comes from traveling to the different realms. Apparently, you can craft or find things called realm cards which allow you to actually shape the procedural generation of the next realm you'll travel to. And that sounds like a very interesting concept. This game is going to release for PC only on early access and next month and I'm really hoping that it has as much content as Walheim had when it was released in early access. Anyways, if Rust is your kind of game, definitely keep an eye out for this one. Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl is a sequel to the award winning first person shooter game Stalker which if you don't know is such a good game that it managed to make its own subgenre which is referred as Stalker Games. Stalker 2 features massive seamless open world and non-linear story in post-apocalyptic theme with RPG and survival elements. It's made with Unreal Engine 5 and is said to feature advanced AI systems, life simulating system, dynamic day-night cycle and weather, cutting-edge graphics, mod support and even a multiplayer mode. 
If this game is as half as good as the original Stalker games, it's going to be amazing. It was supposed to release for PC and Xbox in April this year, but has since been delayed to 2023, mostly because Russia attacked Ukraine, the home country of the developers of this game, so they actually had to halt all the development and literally run for their lives, which is absolute madness. I just hope they are safe and that stupid war will end sooner rather than later. Hull World is an open world Pokemon ripoff where you can not only catch these Pokemon like creatures called pals, but also enslave them and put them in factories that make weapons and that will probably say enough of this game. It's over the top and stupid but might actually be good. I mean the breeding system looks exactly what everyone in the Pokemon community has been asking for for the main series Pokemon games for years. It also features building, farming and you can ride your pals so it definitely has a lot of potential besides just memes. It's going to be released for PC later this year. Not many of you know this but I actually played Call of the Wild The Hunter a lot with my friends and it was surprisingly fun to hunt wildlife together. Call of the Wild The Angler will feature similar gameplay but instead of hunting this time you are fishing. It's going to have a 12 player coop and it's going to release later this year. You get to explore an open world where you try to find the perfect fishing spot and get the ultimate catch. You'll also get to customize your gear which means different kinds of reels, lines, floats, hooks, lures and baits. All in all it's going to offer a lot of chill gameplay and I'm really looking forward to playing it. I'm a huge fan of multiplayer open world survival games like DayZ. I've spent thousands of hours playing the DayZ mod for Arma 2 and ever since I've been waiting for a game that could top the feeling I had when I played that mod. The day before is an open world MMO survival set in a deadly post-pandemic America overrun by zombies and other survivors. You get to search for supplies in various of different locations from skyscrapers to small farmhouses and you even have vehicles to drive around. The day before seems very promising but I'm scared that it will be focused more on casuals and console players like The Division was which had a very cool idea and concept but the gameplay was generic and just wasn't for me. The day before was originally supposed to release this summer but has since been delayed to March 1st 2023. Gotham Knights follows in the footsteps of the excellent Batman Arkham games. It's made by the same studio and will feature similar action RPG gameplay but this time Batman is dead and you can choose to play as Nightwing, Red Hood, Batgirl or Robin and it's one of the critical features of the game. Even though the characters you get to play are sidekicks and not as interesting and dark as Batman, the gameplay looks as fluid and action packed as the previous games from this studio, you can play it cooperatively and the open world is very probably filled with easter eggs and things to uncover just as the games before. I have played all the previous Batman games, Arkham Asylum, Origins, City and Knight and they are all excellent games so since this is the same team doing this game I'm very confident that it'll be as good as the previous titles. Gotham Knights is going to be released later this year on October 25th. Then there are two games that I do have to give credit to in a list like this even though we might never even get to play these games as they seem to be in some kind of a development hell. Weirdly enough both of these games are from the same publisher Ubisoft which probably tells something about that company. The first of these games is Beyond Good and Evil 2. 
Now I didn't play the first game at all and I don't even know that much about that game to be honest but this game is one of the most ambitious projects I have seen although being so ambitious might have been its downfall and it has one of the best cinematics ever. It's an action RPG that you can play solo or with your friends in coop and the scale of this game is just insane. Since its world is so big, they actually asked the community to create artwork like posters and graffitis for the game and even music for the radio stations to play which was a really cool thing and had so many people excited and involved. However, the latest rumors tell us that this game has now been completely cancelled but I really hope that's not true and someday they finish it. It just seems like a too good project to fully abandon. The second Ubisoft game in the development hell is a pirate game called Skull and Bones which originally was a spin-off from Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Now I'm not a fan of AC games at all and I only did play Black Flag a little but the sailing and the pirate atmosphere in that game was very good and I can easily see why they did try to make this spin-off. Skull and Bones was supposed to be a third person open world MMO pirate game but currently nobody is sure what the game is going to be. There are rumors that we'll finally see this game be re-revealed as soon as next month actually, so let's just keep our fingers crossed that it's going to be good because we really don't have enough of good pirate games, especially open world MMO pirate games. But yeah, that was my top 10 list of most anticipated upcoming games. Let me know which one of these is your favorite and if a game should be on this list. Make sure to like and subscribe and thank you for watching, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.